Yeah, welcome back to DXB Today, where we're getting really creative on the show here tonight. We are uh, talking all things design, indoors, outdoor, designs on life, maybe even design as a career. And to that end, uh, we're now joined by our next guest, a leader in the field, driving innovation in the field of design and education. Why and how? By fostering strategic initiatives. Please welcome to the show and to DXB today, Hani Asfour from the Dubai Institute of Design and Innovation. Hani, thank you so much indeed for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. We've got creatives around us. We've got the, inspir the inspirators around us as well, but also the educators of the future generations. Um, and talking of future generation, you can't get away from the future without talking all things tech. And when it comes to design and innovation, how much how much impetus, how much importance is being put on t t tech in design by you, the government and future generations? Absolutely, I mean, technology is the key and from day one our students, although they are designers, visual learners, they need to be technically fluent. Really? So they learn AI, they learn coding, they learn robotics. Even in the first year, we do a robot zoo. So by the end of the first year, the students are displaying the robots. Um, and they are designing them. At the same time, it's very important that they know and master the tools of the future. Mm. Yeah. So they come in with their pencils and their, 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 their drawing pad and you go, no, 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 no. Exactly. No. That's what I was going to ask. Exactly. Like, really though? Yes. Because, you know, the, the, what if they have this kind of, I guess what we would say is old school way of looking yes. at things? Yeah. And no, absolutely not. We, we do teach those things. Okay. We don't expect them to know them. Exactly. Yeah. We, we throw them in the deep end, literally, so they become masterful at not only uh, the softwares, mm. they have to know how to fabricate things. So we have a course which we developed with MIT uh, because there are curriculum partners mm. along mm. with Parsons. The course is called How to Make Almost Anything. <laughs> Literally, and that. and from day one, they learn how to 3D print, how to use a robot to create things, vacuum forming, uh, machine shop, metal, steel, wood, everything. And now, once you have those tools and your creative mind, you can imagine yeah. what you are producing, and yeah. they're producing magnificent things. What does that mean to, to you guys? Because would you have gone in and gone straight in with the AI and the computer side of things? That's if I was still young. I'd, I'd... <laughs> well, I would 100% sign up. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> because we look for that now when we're hiring. And yeah. it's amazing that you offer that in the region and that people don't have to go out exactly. and learn that stuff. It's, exactly. it's, it's That's a, the idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's a game changer. But I would like to ask, at what stage do they start training or having vocational training in, in the field uh, uh, during their uh, in training? Their specific, this is a very good question. When we started the school, we actually did a study. Um, we are, I don't know if you know this, but our main shareholder is Dubai Holding. Yeah. So what we did with Dubai Holding, we did a study. Like, where are, where are the areas of growth in design? and where are the area gaps in the education in the region. So we came in to fill the gaps rather than to compete with other universities. And the gaps were in technology, were in product design, fashion design, multimedia design, and, um, and um, strategic design. And that's where we focused. Now to answer your question, because we're thinking about the future, we believe the future is in between disciplines and we need to break down the silos. Mm -hmm. So the first level of silos that we break down is between technology, business, and design. So they think like entrepreneurs. The second layer, which is the second year, they have to combine two design disciplines. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do wearables, which is one of the biggest growth areas, you need to combine fashion and product design. Mm. If you did fashion alone, it's not enough. Product design is not enough. Absolutely. When you combine them, you have the skills. That's yeah. This is very fascinating for me because my background is in design. I studied multimedia design and yeah. we used to focus more on the programs and thing, doing things with our hand. But now we have to know AI to be, yes. to be able to progress. But a lot of people have kind of pushed back on learning that and impl amplify, like implementing that into their work. But you're saying that that's the future. We have to do it. I, I totally agree with that, Maitha. And especially that I come from practice originally and I saw how where practice, where the world and the market was going, and what we are teaching, there's the abyss is just growing so wide that we need to make sure our, uh, our future 
generations are being prepared to make change in the future. So they have to close that gap. So design becomes relevant. So we channel the creative thinking to solve the world's complex problems. So a big focus of our students is what we call the fourth C, which is caring. Mm. Why are you doing this? How is it changing the world? How is it making the world a better place? How are you being responsible citizens? So a lot of the things that they do, if not all of them, are about changing the world, making it better. So they're taking complex problems. Mm. So there's one student who, who thought of, um, not only thought of, they made. One of the things we do, because we're innovation, they have to make it work. Not only think it, but make it. And so she created um, a gamified solution for children with ADHD. Another one created a robot that plants the desert autonomously, right? And these are first and second year students. We're not talking like advanced students. And our validation came through an amazing story where Sir Johnny Ive, who is the uh, you know, designer of Apple, so he's the largest figure in design, and His Majesty King Charles, they created a challenge, a global challenge, and they invited only four universities in the world, from the US, the UK, Asia, and us. Mm. And they found us. It's not like we looked yeah. for them, because they saw that we are growing the future generation. And this is a first for Dubai. This is huge for Dubai. Let's just talk future, if we can, before, before we have to say farewell. But uh, in terms of the future, and we made a point earlier of saying design has become a hub for so many things, aviation industry, etc. Has it become a hub for design yet? And how, 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 how optimistic are you about the future in terms of design here in Dubai? Oh, design in Dubai is, is, is huge. It's not only emergent, it's beyond emergent. Yeah. We're still at an early phase, okay. but it's bubbling. Um, Dubai is considered by UNICEF as a design city because we have ED, our school, and how focused Dubai is. Yeah. And what I would say to everyone is that we need lateral thinkers to make this world a better place. Mm. And who better than designers to humanize technology? And who better than designers to make intelligent solutions with a the heart? These two are nodding away. Yes, they? they are. Yeah. Absolutely, but that's, that takes me to my next question. It's quite important to uh, uh, introduce technology to the market, to yeah. business owners and, and designers. Yeah. Um, is there anything that's done to spread the word out, to show us the real value? To be completely honest, if we knew exactly uh, uh, the value of technology, which is obviously not debatable, but uh, 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 if there are any ways of spreading more awareness to the, uh, to the field for us to be prepared and, and want it more. And, and I think what, what is missing, Khaled, from, this, from, this, uh, the, from the relationship with us and technology is humanizing it, making it relevant, making it useful and desirable. So for anything to succeed, as designers, you know this, you need to develop trust mm. and the end user needs to find it desirable to come back. Mm. And this is where design comes in because engineering can make it feasible, business can make it viable, but to make it desirable, you need that human element, that, that, that connection mm. with the object. And this is what we focus on. How do you make these technologies desirable mm. and trustworthy? Mm. Mm. Right? And this is what we mean by humanizing mm. technology. It's fascinating. Yeah. Thank you so much, Hani, for Thank being you. with us today. Yeah, like my that's pleasure. a really yeah. interesting talk. Yeah. 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 Yes, I know, indeed. I know. <laughs> Maita wants you to leave. But now, today's spotlight is on a company offering authentic and ethnically sourced home decor interior collections, meticulously curated to reflect sustainability and craftsmanship. This is Joe Inglid from Tribe. My name is Joe England. I'm the founder and creative director of Tribe. We're a homegrown concept for everything furniture and interiors. We have a beautiful collection. Everything is handmade, ethically sourced and using sustainable materials. And every piece in our collection tells a story. So essentially we source from over 25 countries working directly with the artisan groups. So we can bring a very unique collection into our brand. We're, we're a slow furniture movement. 
So we're really fortunate to work with amazing designers and on incredible projects. Uh, we work on a lot of palaces in the GCC region, a lot of restaurants, cafes. Uh, we work for the Sustainability Pavilion for Expo and there's so many exciting projects coming up. So our long-term goal for the company is to expand in the region, both for retail and also for trade. We have a lot of certification for our products now. Uh, for example, our rug company is B Corp certified, which is the highest certification in the world. Our rugs are each, each village where they're woven. There's a school built in every village. The children are fed two hot meals a day and educated. The parents are the weavers and that's how we guarantee no child labour with our rugs. So I love living in Dubai for the weather, obviously, the lifestyle, uh, and I think mainly because it's a safe country. I lived in another country for 13 years where I constantly thought about my personal safety on a daily basis. And I honestly have not locked my car in 10 years. So it's an incredibly safe country. Yep, that's Tribear doing big things in the design space in Dubai. Right, coming up, we are going to speak to one interior designer that is pretty much taking over the city, apparently. Stay right here.